Hello, this is Dwayne, and I am not a financial advisor, but I love sharing insights with you that have helped me build wealth and are helping me expand it for generations to come. Well, today, I'm excited to begin talking to you a little bit about debt. You know, we have a country loaded with debt, and I think sometimes we don't really think about debt the way we should. We don't necessarily see how much of an enemy debt can be. Now, I believe there's good debt and bad debt, and so we're going to talk a little bit about it over the next several days. And I'm excited to share this information with you. Do me a favor. I want you to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell so that you are notified when I put up more great content like this on a daily basis. Well, I want you to come on and be a part of the 30 million people that we are helping around the world build, live, and sustain a wealthy life. And if you would like to join us in the description for this video is a link to my Patreon where you can become a part of my private Discord family. We also like to try to put it in the top comment for the video, but I want you to come on and join us. Well, I got some good stuff I want to share with you on today. Let's get after it. Well, like I said, today we're going to be talking about debt. And I want to get right into uh, starting off real heavy. We want to talk about stupid debt. Um, because sometimes I don't think we have a real good clue of how stupid some debt is. And so let's look at this uh, example. And uh, I'm going to expand it just a little bit for you because I want you to be able to really get the picture of what I'm saying. So let's say a computer has a price of $2,000, credit card terms of 17.8%. So if I put it on this card, I'll pay 17.8%. Minimum monthly payments of 3% of the outstanding balance is what you would have to do. It will take you 13 years and nine months to pay the total price tag of $3,759, including interest. Stupid debt does not start out stupid. Usually it starts out as a matter of convenience. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to go into several things over the next couple of days or so as I'm talking about debt. But I want to open your mind up to perceive, conceive that possibly the way you may have approached debt and the way you may have been taught about debt may be that you put yourself in situations like what we just described to you. Now, why is this kind of debt a problem? Why is it stupid? Why am I calling it stupid debt? Number one, debt promoted discontentment is a problem. When you are charging things with money you do not have, you are not content with your income. You cannot be patient. You cannot wait. You must have it now. But when you acquire things too easily without pride of ownership, it is easy to become dissatisfied quickly. Have you ever met those people who, uh, for real, for real, they get this stuff had to have it, had to have it. It's at the store, bought it. and then in a couple months, they're hardly no longer using it. They don't care about it, but the debt is there. I still got to pay it. I bought the two thousand dollar computer because I just had to have it. Now I'm barely using it, and I've got to make the payments. You know, it's very, very difficult to pay something that you don't want to use no more. When you're not finding it to be useful any longer, many times people don't <clears throat> want to make the payment. Let's look at the second thing. <clears throat> Debt makes arrogant presumptions about the future. By agreeing to have things now and becoming legally obligated to pay for them later, you make bold presumptions about what the future will hold in terms of money, ability, and health. What makes you believe that although you do not have the money now, you will have it later? But worse, you also promise that you will be willing to turn over money you do not have yet to pay for the things you may not have anymore. So this stuff is no longer even in my house. And you think I'm going to still keep paying? 
What makes you think you will be all that thrilled about spending money you have not yet earned for stuff you probably will not even remember? This is an arrogant attitude and an irresponsible presumption on the future. This is arrogance. Three, debt requires you to transfer your future wealth to your creditors. If given the choice of spending monthly support checks, sending monthly support checks to the wealthy credit card industry or sending those same checks to build your own future, would you really choose the first one? Probably not. However, when you agree to stupid debt, that is exactly what you've done. Your choice has been made and there is no way out but to make full repayment no matter how difficult or unreasonable that will be. Debt is going to make you transfer your wealth to somebody else. Four, debt limits your options. If you have any heavy loads of debt, eliminate them altogether. Debt keeps people tied to jobs and careers they hate. It forces moms or dads who would rather be home with their kids to work outside the home. It can even give Mr. or Mrs. Wright second thoughts about their prospective spouse. Debt puts limits on your options. And last, debt steals your freedom and makes you a slave. When you are under a load of stupid debt, you are in bondage. You have no way out but to work off your sentence. King Solomon, the wisest man ever to live, summed it up this way. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. That's in the Bible in Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 7. This is important. I've got to realize what debt is doing to me. And if I don't realize what debt is doing to me, by the time I wake up, I'll be so deeply committed to transferring my wealth to my creditors that it's going to take me forever almost to try and reset and get my life back in order. Let's look at some numbers because I want you to just see how we as Americans look about and think about debt. First, let's talk about credit card. The average credit card debt by age. So if you're younger than 35, your average credit card debt is 3600 and 60 bucks. 47 people in, people in that age bracket have debt, carrying debt. Age 35 to 44, the average credit card debt is 5,990 bucks. In that age bracket, 50% of the people are in debt. And I want you to understand that age bracket begins to put you into the time where typically most people have their largest home payment, largest car payment, because you got their biggest homes and things of that nature. 45 to 54, $7,670 of credit card debt. 51% of these people carry debt. 55 to 64, it starts going the other direction. $6,880 of debt. Average, 46% of these people carry debt. Age 65 to 74, $7,030 average credit card debt. 41% of these people carry debt. And when you're 75 or over, look at this, $8,000 average credit card debt. 28% of these people carry debt. That's the Federal Reserve Survey of Consumer Finances. Now, here's the average debt balances by age group. Generation Z, age 18 to 23, have an average debt of $9,523. Millennials, age 24 to 36, have an average debt of 78,396. Gen Xers, age 40 to 55, have an average debt of $135,841. That's when you have your biggest home, typically, some situations, your largest car payment. Baby Boomers, age 56 to 74, $96,000 and $984 worth of debt. Silent generation, age 75 and above, $40,925 worth of debt. According to Experian, consumers in the two oldest age categories have seen a significant decrease in debt since 2015, about 7.5% decrease for baby boomers and 77 decrease for that silent generation. There is too much debt in the country. Too many people are transferring wealth over. See, I want to talk to you about getting out of debt and how, but I can't 
convince anybody to get out of debt and that debt is a noose around your neck and that debt is the way you transfer your wealth to your creditors until I first convince you how stupid some debt is. A $2,000 computer, 17.8% interest on a credit card, 3% minimum payments, taking me 13 plus years to get out of it. Where do you have 13 years to pay? Where would the computer be in 13 years? Where do you have 13 years to give the credit card company because you're making minimum payments? If all you got is minimum payments, then you're moving too fast. So we've got to pause and think for a moment. This is what this, this video is all about. This is stupid kind of debt. Now, you are not stupid, I am not stupid, but this kind of action, this kind of activity, going into debt this way is stupid. And maybe many of us have done it. When you're younger, when I went to college, when I was 18 years of age, when I got on that college campus, they had credit cards for everybody. We could get credit cards for ease, because we had nothing. I got my first car loan without a job. All I had to do was show them a letter that I was getting a job and they let me drive the car off the lot that day. It is very easy to get into debt, but you can get overextended so fast and you have a hard time getting out and your whole life is turned around. Now, I am helping 30 million people live wealthy. You're not going to live wealthy unless you get out of bad debt and start using good debt to build wealth. So I got to start with this. We've got to understand what stupid debt is. And when you understand what stupid debt is, you start turning on stupid debt and you begin to hate stupid debt and you no longer agree to stupid debt. So that's what we're starting with on today. And I want to get your palate wet because you have got to get out of debt, bad debt so that you can build wealth. You can't build wealth paying a computer off for 13 years. It's killing what you need to build. So we've got to wake up to the reality that I've got to kill bad debt, but I first got to realize that debt is stupid debt. Well, I hope you've got something out of this on today. Share this with someone. Listen, there's a lot of you sitting out there right now feeling comfortable because you've got all this stuff that you're sitting around and it's around your house and you're driving it, but you don't own it. It's owned by the credit company. You're just simply paying for it. And hopefully one day you'll pay it off. But if you stick with me, we're going to see this thing right. We're going to deal with it effectively. And we're going to build the wealth we're supposed to build. So excited to share this with you. So excited to be with you on today. I'm looking forward to sharing with you again real soon. You have an absolutely blessed time and day. Until then, God bless.